everybody, how's it going? My name's Lizzie. I'm going to do one more departed loved one message and then I'm going to go to sleep because my sinus infection is back in full swing. Let's see what we got. Ooh, drag queen. <laughs> Change is hard, but it's for the better. So some of you just could be entering LGBTQ. Um, doesn't have to be. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting this. This could be a feminine who just had like a like a masculine face, and this could be a joke. Like um, people could have called them a drag. Not that it would be a joke, but like this could be their joke to you if that's the case. If they had a masculine face and people you know, thought they were maybe a drag queen in life, or they were, um, or you could be. You've been putting in all the work. It's time for you to step back and collect yourself and have some fun. Give them time to realize your worth. But if it has nothing to do with LGBTQ for you, think about what a drag queen does. It's like the usually take on a persona like a, a celebrity or you know they pick a name and they design a, a personality into their outfit so they could just be saying like you're out here playing a part for business like you're hustling working hard selling yourself for something and, and you're just not being appreciated for it it could be that or this could be a lover who just You've been putting all the work in the relationship and they don't meet you halfway. It's like they're not trying. They might be a bit of a moocher or a friend even. Fergalicious bootylicious. Why did I just hear this? Fergie. Big girls don't cry is playing in my head. Must be a Fergie fan or a Black Eyed Peas, maybe. Josh. Ugh, who is Fergie married to? I just saw that guy. Someone could have had a crush on that person, but I saw him on that show way back in the day it was like a casino or something and they were like investigators it was like a crime show but in a casino i don't know <laughs> it was on for a while it's a good show i just can't remember what it was called i heard weekend at bernie's and beanie babies like they're dating themselves. This is definitely someone who probably came up in the same time I did. Might have been a little bit older. I heard Pogs. Oh my god. I haven't thought about Pogs in years. Google what they are little kids if you don't know what Pogs are. A less cool version of fidget spinners. <laughs> you carry my picture. So they're acknowledging that it, it, oh my god, my nose is itching for this one too. It might not be on in person. It might be in like a wallet or your pocket. Or it could just be you carry it from house to house. Like it's by your bed. Stuff like that. New things are coming for you. And it will be very, very, very good for you. So you got good stuff coming in. I heard the end of the bad. And my voice just got emotional. Uh, might have made some Parkinson's. I kind of feel like uh, I'm shaky a little bit. Or they just, it might not have been Parkinson's. Some older people just shake. I'm like feeling like a bobbly head type of thing. But I don't feel like they could control it because I'm not being able to control it right now. I'm just, I'm letting it happen. I don't know. This could be Tourette's too. I've ch I channeled somebody with Tourette's. I was, uh, it was a murder investigation, unfortunately asshole parent killed their kid because they had um uh, it wasn't just Tourette's it was like but the kid was violent not meaning to uh, this might be relevant to you in some way but it's like um the parent just snapped and 
I was connecting because, you know, it's really hard for angels to get some of those spirits to cross. They don't understand mental illness, although they, they have special own angels and they're protected. It's still a, the choice of the soul when they go home. So I went in trying to help this and I just let it happen. I wanted to understand what it was like to live in that person's body to not have control of their emotions and anger and shaking and all that and I'm, I'm definitely getting that like this person at some point probably was fine but as the shaking got worse like they couldn't feed themselves um, very well you know it just spilled brushing their hair like everything became difficult or this could have just been a symptom near their death but they're, they're referencing it. They made me feel what it was like to, to just be, just to be still, but not in your own body. Your body, just imagine what that would just be like all day. It's maddening. It made this person mad. This person was very, like, I feel like OCD, um... So it really, not maybe not OCD, maybe they were just a control freak in life because they could not control their body. That's why I feel like mentally ill people get so stuck to their routines because it's the one thing in their day that they have a say of, that they have control over when they watch a show, when they eat their lunch, when they take their nap, when they go to the bathroom, like that is something that they can monitor and they can oh my <laughs> hiccups that they can that's why like autistic kids are very uh, attached to their schedule this person was like that it could even be like a nervous tick or anxiety I, it doesn't I'm not necessarily sold that it's Tourette's or Parkinson's Because I feel like there was moments of stillness. And like it might have gotten worse during certain parts of the day. Or it wasn't prominent until later in their life. Like they were normal until they were older. Something like that. I open doors and windows. So if you have stuff moving around, it's this person. I don't feel like you should be fearful. If anything, they're just pranking you. They're just trying to get your ticker going for a second. Um, it's all in good fun. Divine purpose. They had some kind of um, impact in their community. Um, it might not have been something grand, grandiose like um, but I feel like they did make an impact to what they, whatever condition, like they participated in a study, they left money, they donated time and money while they were here, I don't know, they could have documented it and like put it on YouTube or something, they like did something for the cause here before they left and they were meant to, and it, it did make it a difference, it is helping people like them still. That's beautiful. And rainbows. I think this person sent my mom. And it's funny because I've had this similar. Now that I'm a medium and I'm working with more families. I've heard this. My mom lost her brother to leukemia when he. I don't even think he made it to 21. I think he was just barely 19. I, I wasn't born yet. I was long before I was born. I never got to meet him unfortunately. But he had a full ride to play professional football and he had to give it up because that was the year he was diagnosed uh, I think he started playing or something and he kept getting fatigued and they couldn't figure out why and they found the cancer so he had to give up like the one thing he loved uh, and I think he just lost his um, he fought for a long time but it wasn't my, in my mom's understanding he always knew he was going to die and he took off and he traveled for as long as he could and when he couldn't travel anymore he called my mom and my mom took him in her house and he stayed there until he died but the day of the funeral my mom 
you know, she is very much the stoic one. Like, she was in hospice. She took care of her brother until he died. The whole family kind of fell apart, and my mom distinctly remembers she was in the car. Everybody had left. Um, my mom's family is Christian science, so they don't really do the whole um, funeral thing. I don't even think they had a funeral. I think this is just something that they did because he wasn't in the paper. But anyway, she was sitting in the car and it was pouring rain and the rain just stopped. And it was like freaky eerie how it, like pouring rain had just stopped. And there was a rainbow. And it was just weird how it had been a storm. And it was just like he had told my mom that he was going to tell her in some way that he was okay and that everything was fine because my mom you know saw him through some really horrific shit and I think out of everyone he chose to communicate with her because she bears the weight for everybody else and you know that was her she finally broke like she had taken care of him she had gotten through all of that and you know taking care of everyone now her brother was laid to rest and now she could finally break and I feel like this is relevant for you either there's going to be a, a moment that you're going to have like this that you're kind of this person that took care of this person they're acknowledging like you were like my mom like all the hard stuff all the difficult stuff you were there for this person you saw them through and they might have promised that they were going to see show you some way that they were going to be okay in whatever way they could but if you ever saw a rainbow or if you see rainbows that this is that person like my uncle to my mom like thank you for taking care of me I'm okay and you I'm going to bless you you have good things coming for your kindness for your grace graciousness and the way that you love me and took care of me because I, I feel like this person did rely on you but rainbows also talk about healing. So if you're going through any medical stuff, know that you're going to be okay. BFFs for life bracelet around my soul. We are still close in death. I'll always be around for you when you need me or miss me. Love you lots. So this could be your literal best friend. Could be a sister or brother that was like a sibling. Just somebody who would, it could have been family, but you were more than family. You were their best friend or just literally their best friend. Their or your temper is over the top. This is getting dangerous. I think it's time to get some safe distance. Just because I left the world does not mean you left my heart. I carry you with me. I watch over you always. I love you. Oh dear. I don't think it's cr a crazy idea. I think that if you want it bad enough, you can do anything. I'm with you. I'm going to break these down in a minute. Stop this pissing contest. It's beneath both of you. You're better than that. That's what this temper is. Sibling rivalry. Lessons become blessings. So you learned hard lessons in life. You've been through hard stuff, and because of it, you're about to be blessed. Um, you have some kind of idea about something. The spirit, I kind of feel like mom energy or female energy, um, but I, I feel two energies. There's like that female energy I just said, and there's like two more, but they're not coming close enough yet. It might be a different part of the message that they're going to step up in, but... Um, they want you to go after that idea thing. Um, just because I left the world does not mean you left my heart. They love you. They still miss you. They love you and miss you just as much as you love and miss them. Um, stop this pissing contest. It's getting dangerous. Whoever you're beefing with, it's about to get like fisty cuffs. You both could get in trouble. You both could get hurt. Um, if you have exes in your life or if you're in an abusive relationship, get the fuck out now. They said, get the fuck out now, that slow. So, your life's in peril. Like, no fucking around, pack your shit, stop this reading. You don't need to know anything more. They're like, your life is in jeopardy, get out. And call me, because I'll whoop their ass. <laughs> Alright, so, um, let's get some advice from... 
your spirit to you, or like your individual stuff. Invitation. Ooh. There's like a wedding invitation you might get. Calm, love, beauty, kindness, hope. It could be years. If you're single, this is like, I'm hearing dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so I don't know if this is like yes you're going to find someone you're going to get married or they know you're getting married you could be working on your invitations I did, I used to make wedding invitations so that's freaky <laughs> they could be acknowledging um, something about invitations maybe you did their invitations um, I'm seeing it invitation by a grave site that somebody like even though they're not alive did you like leave your wedding invite at their web at their grave site just you know to be like I'm getting married you know oh, that's cute they're like they're like I'm RSVPing I'll be there or I was there I saw it um, but this is also talking about invite love into your language with this hostel. If it is a family member and it's about to be fisticuffs and you know you guys are going to be in each other's life for a while, it's time to start speaking with love so it doesn't get violent. Number one, intention. Your number one priority is yourself and your safety. Put yourself first. Get out of toxic situations. Include, if it's like an abusive relationship, of course, put yourself first. You are number one. Get out of there. But if this is like a relationship, it's like the number one priority is to bring the love back in the situation because it is going to get violent and nobody wants that. I heard nobody wants that. Nobody needs that. That's just another headache, another complication. See any messages from your person? Focus your mind on what you really want. We are helping. Maybe you're trying to figure out um, what your major is or what job you should take or what um, idea you should come up with or a theme or something. Like what do you really want in this life? Make a dream board. Make a vision board. This is how it, it will help you manifest. And focus on, all right, this is what I really want. So I'm going to do this first. I'm going to do this second. I'm going to do this third. It helps you plan it as well. Spread your wings and fly. We are proud of you. Ooh. So it's like uh, you're moving on. You've got a new, um, this is a butterfly here. It's like you're transfer, transfer, oh, I can't speak. Transforming. I feel like this is a graduate. I do feel grandparents. That might be the two over here. Um, this might be a part of the same family. Or for someone else, there's a young graduate. It's like really think about what you want to do. If you're going to college, you don't want to waste your money. You don't want to waste your time. And if you don't know what you want to do your first year, just do your liberal arts, they said. Just pick liberal arts for the first year. You can change your major the next year. Don't waste time and energy on things that are, aren't going to serve your future. Um, be safe. Um, save up your money. Work hard. Keep your morals. And call your parents because they're going to miss you. Um, but for everybody else, this is make a vision board. Make a plan. And they'll help you manifest it. We will assist you in helping the important people in your life use love. So this is the parents. So I'm assuming this is like your parents and then like maybe your kid is going to college. Or you're the college kid and these are your parents. But it's like everybody's going to be okay. Everyone's going to get what they need. Just, you know, put the intention out there. Speak pray about it, ask for help in your community, take control of the situation, we know you can do this. This is taking that control from violent people, get, removing yourself out of toxic situations so they can't hurt you anymore, they can't use or demonstrate power over you anymore. Removing yourself from the situation is the best thing to do in any kind of toxic situation. 
and if it is like a co-worker situation um you're being warned that you're gonna have like an office fight and all, like a, a physical altercation if you're not on top of this which nobody needs that in a business let's get some closing messages from your person don't sweat the small stuff it's like we get overtired and we get worried and we get stressed out and we harp on all the wrong things and it clouds our judgment and it keeps us from seeing where we need to go and what we need to do. So not sweating all the small stuff is actually making room for us to see what we need to see and deal with what we need to deal with. It's a choice to just breathe like, you know what, that's not even worth being upset. Let's move on. Like just saying that to yourself is so helpful. It's time to fill yourself back up. You're very depleted. Like me, I'm very drained. I'm very tired. Um, but that's getting that rest, getting the medicine, putting the right food in your body, get, going to see a counselor if you need it, like being better with your money, being better with your inner voice and how you speak to yourself. This is raising your vibration. This is raising your vitality. This is raising your status, putting the work in. But... It's about having fun right now. The spirit's like you're so stressed out. You're so worked up all the time. Like you really need to spend time getting out. It's summer. It's beautiful out. Enjoy that sun. Get out and spend time with your family and friends. Go to a literal carnival. Eat some greasy food. Like if you're like overly health con health conscious it's okay to just have a cheat day and if you are really crappy with your health it's time to um put in more healthy food days it's like you don't have to make the switch overnight this is small small little buckets at a time as you fill up your well baby steps don't sweat the small stuff don't overshoot don't overthink don't over prepare don't over plan and work yourself up this is taking a deep breath this is finding out what you want to do with your life, making that vision board, uh, making a mental plan, um, getting your mind and body right, and then putting forth action. You're, you're just in the, I need to pause, I need to think, I need to prepare, and I need to plan. So it's just a moment of stillness in your life, and that's okay. This person doesn't want you to panic. We go through this these phases randomly throughout our life, I'm going through this myself like where do I go next with my career what am I doing with my channel I, a lot of things are up in the air but a lot of things are grounded and rooted and centered like I have my own place I have my own home I'm stable but my career is not stable there's areas that are there's areas that aren't and this is exactly where you are and this is like reclaiming your art making that vision board is a way to really tell yourself this is what I want to do first. This is what's most important to me. This is what should be a goal I should be looking for and who I date and where I work. This is my morality. This is my spirit. This is my essence. I know who I am. Like sometimes literally putting it on paper and seeing who you are is super helpful. Um, I, I think also the spirit is saying you have a lot of fun with artistic projects. It calms you down, and that might help you not sweat the small stuff by having those fun little projects for yourself. And make sure you're telling the truth even to yourself when you don't like something, when you don't want something, when you're upset about something, when you need something. You have to start speaking because you just sit in your mind and you worry and you sweat about it and, you, and it just, like, it can become an ulcer. It can become stress that makes your hair fall out, makes you lose a bunch of weight or gain a bunch of weight. Like stress becomes very toxic, the spirit is saying. So make sure you're managing that. Maybe um, talk to a professional if you need medication or if you need a therapist. Or I love, I love like kickboxing. <laughs> it gets my stress out so much. See the light, see the higher perspective when you do get in those moments and you're getting caught up and everything's like, oh, think about all the things that are good in your life. Like you have food in your belly, you have a home, your kids are safe, you're safe. Like everything's overall fine. The important things are taken care of. The important things we need are here. And if they aren't here, see that it's time for you to reach out to your community and say, hey, I'm lacking an 
put that pride aside to get what you need. Like everybody needs help. Everybody needs a handout at one point. Everybody has to share something. Like don't be too proud to say, hey, I'm hungry and I don't have food. Or hey, I need a place to stay. Or hey, I need help with my kids. Or like I need advice. Like I don't know what to do. I just need a girl's night. Like it's okay to say those things. It's okay to be vulnerable to the people in your life. It's all about give and take. You're out here giving and giving and giving and giving. Give yourself permission to take now because you need it. There's something that you're lacking or need support of. And people are going to step up because you step up for them. They will return the favor. And thank God. And I think you do. I think you, even though you go through hard times and you go through spurts, the spirit is saying you, you do overall, you overall are a thankful person and you have changes coming with this double five that you're going to be like, oh my God, thank you. Like what you need is coming. Like you're going to be okay. You're, it's going to, you're going to get eventually, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be this year, it might be next year, but something's coming in your life that, whether that be a, a perfect relationship, money, a new career, but it's going to be a new start and it's going to light your life up. You're going to be feeling great about where you are, who you are with and what you are doing. Like you are going to get on the right track and you're going to make the money you want. You're going to do what you need to do. This is just a moment of pause. Don't let it become more than what it is. Everybody needs a moment of pause to figure stuff out. You will figure it out. Maybe you need to ask um, some advice, see a counselor, but that's okay. Like, we don't come with a manual with all life's answers. So you have to ask for help in your community. You have to ask professionals. And everybody's a professional in their own thing. That's why we network and we have different people in our lives. You need to open your heart and, and drop that pride and give yourself out if you want love. Um, speak up if you need help. And, and open your heart up to people to people that you're beefing with so it doesn't become fisticuff changed like look I know we've been yelling at each other and we're not really getting anywhere can maybe like I know we are angry but maybe you know so we don't go there can we maybe not speak for a few days or can we just talk like this <laughs> like just change the tone rebel against what you were doing in that toxic area because it's just going to lead to a big fight stop it before the cops are cold that's basically what i'm hearing and face your fears your fear is the, the biggest thing the spirit says that stops you in life you are the biggest roadblock to your own success so you need to cut it out um, i'm seeing the cut it out from a uh, full house again referencing a time period here <laughs> anyway i hope it was helpful i hope you liked it i hope it resonated if you want more like this in the future if it like i said if it resonated please hit the thumbs up below if you like my energy i know i'm a bit low right now i'm on antibiotics for a sinus infection it is like three in the morning so i'm a little tired <laughs> but next time i'll be high vibrational just this sinus stuff is like the worst year but I know it's not me everybody in my area has said this is like the worst year for sinuses and last year was pretty nasty too so it's like getting progressively worse let me know in the comments where you live and if you're if you're experiencing like high pollen levels like we have ridiculously high pollen it's messing me up it's, my nephew has the same thing like he's only five and like he all day is just like <laughs> like snorting like a pig because he just can't he can't breathe and I can't either and that's sad but it's we need the pollen this is how plants but it's like I feel like it's escalating the earth is amping up every year and, and levels we haven't seen but I think that's bad are they making up for the lack of bees like I'm allergic to bees I would love a planet without bees but realistically I don't want a planet without bees because then we're all gonna die like we need bees unfortunately I just <laughs> I just send out in the universe when I see a bee you stay in your lane and I'll stay in mine okay because you can kill me and I don't want to hurt you so please don't hurt me and usually they just fly off it's like they feel my energy like okay cool <laughs> you know i'll just fly over here but then you know you get the nosy wasps 
Like the angry hornets. I don't like them ones. We don't need hornets. We don't need killer bees. We just need honeybees. I like honeybees. Honeybees aren't vicious. Like you really gotta piss or scare a honeybee off to sting you. Like most honeybee stingings are accidental. You flew into the stinger or it landed on you and was like, oh my god, this is a human. Oh. <laughs> you know, they're not vicious. I'm scared. I, I'm scared of honeybees because yes, their stinger can k kill me, but I'm not like, oh my god, it's a honeybee. But if I see like a wasp, fuck you, I'm running. Wasps are jerks. They're like the bully of the bees. And so are, well, hornets aren't too bad. Their bites hurt the worst, though. Their stings, I mean. Hornets are the worst freaking stings. They're the worst. But wasps and killer bees are straight up dicks. They will follow you for miles, and you're just minding your business. You're like not even trying to bother them. You piss them off, they will follow you for three miles. It's like, go away! Don't you have something else to do? <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. I will see you all soon. Toodaloo boo boos. Bye.